Okay, so this lesson is going to be about a particular function known as the greatest integer function. And like I told you, calculus students, um, it's kind of a rare function. Um, don't see it very often. Technically, you can learn about it in pre-calculus, but most teachers don't really cover it because it doesn't really serve much of a purpose until you get to uh, things like in calculus where we like to do limits. Um, they do have some real-life applications, but <clears throat> for the most part, it's just something that's kind of overlooked. So here's what it is, basically. Um, it looks like this. There's actually three ways it could be presented to you. It could look like this, or it could look like this. Or it can look like this. I've seen it presented in a variety of ways. Um, but they, they all pretty much mean the same thing. And basically what this function does is whatever you plug in for x, gets rounded down. To the nearest integer. Whatever you plug in for x gets rounded down to the nearest integer. So I'm going to do an example for you. All right, so let's say that I have my function here, number one. Let's say that my function is um, f of x is equal to the greatest integer value of x. So, and let's say that I wanted to figure out what is f of 1.5. Well, I'm going to plug in 1.5 for x. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to round this number down to the nearest integer. An integer is a number that's not a decimal or a fraction. So if I were to round this down to the nearest integer, the answer would be 1. Okay? Let's do another one. What about f of 1.8? Well, now I'm going to plug in 1.8. If I were to round that down to the nearest integer, it would be 1. Now, notice there's a key word. I'm rounding down to the nearest integer. I understand that this is closer to the value of 2, but we always round down to the nearest integer. Okay, let's do another one, number 3. How about f of 6.2? That would be 6, right? So that, that's what the greatest integer value function does. Um, I don't want to bore you guys and make the video take much longer about explaining why this is useful. I just want to make sure you guys know how to use it for now, okay? Because it's, it's actually kind of useful when it comes to limits, at least, and we'll definitely get to that part. Um, but I want, to, I want to show you something else, though. It does get a little bit interesting when you plug in negatives. So let's say I plugged in negative 6.2. Guess what the answer is? The answer is negative 7. It's not negative 6. Here's why. Remember, we're rounding down. If you round this to negative 6, you actually rounded it up because negative 6 is greater than 6.2. So we want to round it down. The nearest integer below negative 6.2 is negative 7. Let's try another one just to make sure you got it. See if you guys can figure out what this one would be. The answer would be negative 4. I suppose I could even try to get a little bit more confusing and, and give you something like this. A fraction, right? Well, my advice to you would be to just change it into a decimal if you have a fraction, right? Let's try that. 15 divided by 6, right? And it's negative, so it's basically negative 2.5. 
So if I were to round this down to the nearest integer, it would be negative 3. Okay, so that's what the um, greatest valued integer function does. So <clears throat> at this point, I would say you might want to look at your worksheet and do the first part of that worksheet where you evaluate just like this, um, just to practice it, um, and then come back to the video. And I'll, the next part of the video is actually graphing, so I'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, so here's your guys' worksheet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of these problems for you guys. I'm going to do number eight, okay? And then after that, um, you guys can do five through seven, right? Um, here we go. So y is equal to the greatest integer value of 2x. All right, so um, we're just going to start plugging in some numbers. It looks like I've already got an answer for the first one. Let's go ahead and do negative 0.9. So that's what I'm going to plug in negative 0.9 but it's being multiplied by 2, right? 2 times x. So, <clears throat> I don't like how I wrote that. I'm going to write it differently. There we go. So, 2x is now 2 times negative 0.9. Well, 2 times negative 0.9 is negative 1.8. And if I round that down to the nearest integer, I get negative 2. And so that's what this is going to be. Negative 2. And I'll continue that. If I were to plug in negative 0.6, I'd get negative 1.2. Rounding that down, I still get negative 2. If I plug in negative 0.5, I would get uh, negative 1. Now that is where it changes. Because if you plug in negative 0.5, you get negative 1. And the, the close integer to that is negative 1 itself. It just stays as negative 1. So let's do negative 0.4. If I plug in negative 0.4, I get negative 0.8. And if I round that down to the nearest integer, that would be negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this table now. Just I think we kind of have the idea. Um, <clears throat> so there's all my points. Now I, I, it says, for each greatest integer value function below, use the table provided to graph it. So I want to graph this. And this is kind of tedious. But after you graph one, you kind of start to get the idea of how to graph it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot all of these points. So here's my graph. Um, let's start with negative 1, negative 2. So I'm going to go left 1, down 2, and I'm going to put a dot. And then I'm going to do the next one. Negative 0.9, negative 2. Now negative 0.9 would be a little bit less than negative 0.1, but it's still negative 2, so I have another dot right here. And then negative 0.6, negative 2. That's a little more than half, maybe like right about here. Um, negative 0.5, and by the time I get to negative 0.5, right in the middle here, we are now at negative 1, so it starts up here again. Okay, so from here to here, it goes here until it gets to about 0.5, and then that piece stops, and then it jumps up to here. Okay, so from anything from negative 2 up to, but not including 0.5, we keep getting negative 2 answers, so it stays down here as a flat line, until you actually get to 0.5, in that case, it stops being down here and it jumps up to this spot. Now, after 0 0.5, if we go to negative 0.4, we're still at negative 1. If we go to point, negative 0.1, we're still at negative 1. And it just keeps going all the way across until we get to 0. And at 0, it stops being there. So that's an open dot. Let me redraw that so it looks more like an open dot. It stops being there, and then it jumps up to 0 when we get to x equals 0. At x equals 0.1, it's still 0. At x equals 0.4, it's still 0. But by the time we get to 0.5, it stops being there, and it jumps up to 1. And so basically, you just end up with this stair step situation. It looks like stairs. And it just kind of goes by halves. So every time it gets to the end of a half mark, it stops, and it jumps up to the next level. OK? And so there's the graph of this particular function. And they're all going to look like that. They're all going to look like a stair-step situation. <clears throat> and for that reason, greatest integer value functions are often called step functions as well. So um, that's how you graph one. So just to kind of get the idea of some points, I give you some data to plot 
but after a while, your graph should look like a stair step, basically. Okay, um, I'm going to come back to that graph in a minute, I think. So um, let's move on here. I'm going to clear that off. I think I'll bring it back in a minute. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about is limits, limits with these things. So I think I'm going to do number 12. Okay, I'm going to do number 12. Matter of fact, I'll do 11 and 12. Okay, so let me bring all that back. Now for 11 and 12, we're being asked to find the limit as x approaches, wasn't it 2 from the left? I can't remember now. I got to. Let me bring it back. I lost it. Oh, we're approaching 1. Sorry about that. So we're, we're looking for the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. And we're looking for the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. Now, these are very simple to answer whenever you just have your graph already done if you've done your graph correctly. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it using the graph. Um, so if you're coming at 1 from the left, well, let's find where x equals 1. Here's where x equals 1, and that's here. So now if I'm coming at it from the left, what limit am I approaching? I'm approaching a limit of 1. But if I come at 1 from the right, coming this way, I'm approaching a value of 2. So you see how um, because it's a step function, at that point where x equals 1, it, it changes from being 1 to 2. So the limit from the left is 1, the limit from the right is 2, and therefore you could say technically the limit does not exist at x equals 1. And that's how you guys are going to be doing numbers 9 um, and 10. And you could do 13 that way too, although you're not going to have a graph for 13. So I want to show you guys another way to do it without using any um, graphs, okay? So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do a different example. I don't want to do those ones. I want you guys to do those. But what we're going to do is we're going to backtrack to lesson 3.1. So let's, let me make up a problem first of all. Let's say I want to find the limit as x approaches, um, let's say, 2. Actually, I think I'm going to change that in a minute, so let's, let's wait on that. But I'm going to make up a function here, um, 2x plus 1. See, I have that. What x value should I be approaching? Let's say I'm, I'm coming at 1.5 from the right. And then I also want to do the limit as x approaches 1.5 from the left for the same function. Okay, so I could go through the trouble of graphing this, but another way we can just get the answer is by doing a table, okay? Just like we did back in lesson 3.1. So I'm going to put the x value that I'm approaching here in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some numbers that are really close to 1.5. So let's say like, let's take away, let's take away a tenth here. I'm going to put 1.4 over here, and over here I'm going to put 1.6. And let's see what the difference is in the outcomes. So if I were to plug in 1.4, let's see what I would get. So that's going to be 2.8 plus 1, which is 3.8, and that is 3. So when I plug in 1.4, I get 3. Um, let's see what happens when I plug in 1.6. That would be 4. And... I don't know, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and see what happens when we actually plug in the number in the middle, which is the one I'm trying to approach. Let's see what that is, just for the heck of it. I'm kind of curious. Um, <clears throat> eh, no, let's not. Th there's an answer there. I just don't care about it. 
So here's the deal. When I'm coming at x equals 1.5 from the left, it's 3. And you could, you could test that by plugging in another number. Like say you plugged in 1.45, something a little bit close to 1.5. You're still going to get 3 as an answer. Over here, if you plug in 1.6, we get 4, but if you plug in something even closer, like 1.62, for instance, you're still going to end up with 4 as an answer. So what's happening is, as you're coming at 1.5 from the left, you end up with 3. And as you come at 1.5 from the right, you end up with 4. <clears throat> and so, once again, though, I mean, you could graph it on decimals or something and, and um, see what it looks like, but... That, that's basically the gist. So you can use your graphs if you've already got a graph to find the limit. Or you can do tables. And you can just plug in numbers to get closer and closer and closer to your limit number. And you can see what's happening. On this side, they would all be threes until you finally get here. And then on this side, they'd all be fours until you finally get here. And so I think the one in the middle would probably end up being a, a four, I imagine. But anyway. That's limits with step functions, and uh, the worksheet would be due on Thursday if you're interested in doing it, okay?